These are blistering numbers. These are super strong numbers. How sustainable are these figures? Yeah, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks very much, Guy, for, for having me again today. Uh, we absolutely believe they are sustainable. Uh, and, and maybe just to put it a little bit in context, we had grown last year 28% year over year, and that is 25% over the pre-pandemic year 2019. So just to put it in perspective, half of our business is in automotive, and the automotive part of our business actually did grow by 44% last year, compared to a SAR growth of only a two and a half or three percent, I believe, last year. Now, looking at the guidance, um, we just guided this morning uh, to have another year-on-year -year growth of 21 percent in the first quarter of, uh, of this calendar year. Uh, and I also made kind of a soft forecast for the year to be above our long-term growth plan, which is eight to 12 percent over the next three years. So I did say we will be above 12 percent for the total company for the entire calendar year okay. 22. Now, I do think it is sustainable because our, the largest part of NXP is exposed to the automotive and to the industrial markets. Those are very lo longevity markets, uh, very sticky design wins, very, very, very strong content growth. If you think about electric vehicles, if you think about smart manufacturing in the industrial space, and our design win uh, inventory is so full that I'm, I'm very, very confident about that growth. Well, speaking of the automotive space in particular, Kurt, I was speaking with the chairman of Renault last week. We've heard from a number of auto executives that they think that the supply crunch on the on the semi side, on the chip side, is going to ease in the second half of this year. Are they being too optimistic? Uh, we actually believe that um, there might be areas where it's indeed a bit easing in the second half of the year. A bit easing means that maybe we come a little bit closer to, um, to a demand supply balance. Uh, but over and above, I do not think that at the end of this year, we will be exiting and will be in balance between demand and supply. And mind you, all of this is still in a situation where um, especially the auto OEMs and their suppliers, the tier one suppliers, would love to build up strategic inventory going forward. Nobody, I think, is going to be in any position this year to do this. We see inventory still being super lean across the entire extended supply chain. So I, I really don't see how, how we will come into balance uh, through this year. Kurt, in the past, this has been an incredibly cyclical industry. We're seeing huge investments at the moment being made by you, your rivals across the industry. You talk about the industry not getting into balance for really quite some time. Is this cycle going to be different? Are we going to see at some point going from sort of the famine to feast in terms of the availability of, of semiconductors on the market? Or, and I hate to use this phrase, is this, is this, is this cycle going to be different? Is this time going to be different? Well, I, I don't know if it is going to be different for the en entirety of the semiconductor industry. I think it is different when it comes to the markets which NXP is, 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 is almost uniquely exposed to, which is the industrial and automotive market. So think about three quarters of the company is in industrial and automotive. And here I do believe it is different for two reasons. One, the kind of applications which are coming up here are just showing significant sustainable new demand, which is not about shortwave mobile or computing demands but it's much more about stable demands in, in, in strong industries like automotive and industrial. China yep. is a very, a very large market for you, Kurt, and I'm wondering how you, you're seeing the demand picture there in particular, given some of the more idiosyncratic factors happening in that market in particular. Excuse me, Kaylee, I didn't understand. Which market are you referring to? China, which represents the bulk of your revenue. Well, China represents about half of our ship to revenue, um, but that doesn't mean all of that product remains in China. In many cases, we actually ship to China. It's being built into a half finished or fully finished product, which is then re-exported uh, back to Europe or, or the US. Uh, we currently don't see any slowdown in the demand from China. Okay. Let's just talk a little bit about production and what's happening with the increasing desire on a nation-by-nation -nation basis to be able to have some degree of production onshore. Kurt, we have the, uh, the CHIPS Act 
uh, going through Congress at the moment. We'll wait and see exactly on the timing surrounding that. But nevertheless, you are a company that, that outsources a, a decent chunk of your production. What do you make of the CHIPS Act? What do you think it's going to achieve? And will it change your thinking in terms of how you think about production and where you manufacture? Well, first of all, we, we greatly appreciate the CHIPS Act. I think it's a, it's a super important um, element of the policy in the US to strengthen the, 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 the chip industry in the US because there will be ever more demand and ever more dependence on semiconductors going forward. Uh, at the same time, what we are seeing is that where the semiconductor industry used to be almost a perfectly globalized industry, there is now more a move again, and I, I don't know where this is exactly going to land going forward, more a move again to be more regionalized. Because the same thing the US is trying to do is happening in Europe. They, they, I think it's going to be next week. They're going to announce what they also call a CHIPS Act, which is the target to, I think, quadruple the amount of semiconductors being manufactured in Europe um, to a 20% world market share. So this is happening in the US and it is happening in Europe. And I think genuinely this is a good move. And given the fact that NXP is a very global company, we definitely support and appreciate that. Let's not forget we have actually have three manufacturing, large manufacturing facilities in the US. So we are in deep dialogue here to try and influence and benefit uh, the CHIPS Act for the US.